Hello, Jungle Chief here to talk about the most difficult quest in the game. A menace sleeps beneath Castlemark. In this video, I will be covering some facts that might help you before tackling this lengthy post-game dungeon. I will be breaking this video down in parts. Prepping, general combat strategies and philosophies, and then pointers on how to handle a few of the more difficult encounters. For prepping, I just want to talk about a few things. Zoo Tinder, Heal Cast, Thermal Suit, and a Ribbon. Zoo Tinder ingredients are easily purchasable in Lestalem and give you an 80% crit rate increase. The 80% crit increase will be your most efficient way to acquire additional DPS, and the extra 2000 HP on top of that is a nice bonus. The next thing you'll want to acquire while you're still in Lestalem purchasing Zoo Tinder ingredients is the Thermal Suit, which I'm showing its location right here. The Thermal Suit makes you immune to fire, which will help with a few of the otherwise difficult encounters. Next, you'll want to make sure to make Heal Cast Magic. The easiest way to do this is to combine one of any element with four potions. Heal Cast acts pretty much like using a High Elixir. This is a nice workaround to the no items rule of a Minus Sleeps Beneath Castle Mark. And these can be mixed while you are in the dungeon, so if you need more, you can always go back to your Elements tab. I would also recommend picking up Ultimate Death Blow before you go into this dungeon. Ultimate Death Blow lets you do insane amounts of damage whenever you trigger an enemy's vulnerable state. If you have some spare AP lying around, I would be sure to grab it. After all that, go stay at camp, use one of your Zoo Tinder recipes. I would buy ingredients for at least six, and then you're ready to head into the dungeon. For general combat, let me start by mentioning my general equipment. The Zwill Crossblades are in my hands at the start of almost every encounter and make an excellent pairing with the Zoo Tinder recipe. I keep the Apocalypse a very powerful sword and heal cast magic assigned. What you do with the last slot is up to you. I also keep a ribbon as an accessory, since you will not be able to cure status here. What you do with the other accessory slot is also up to you. Don't get mashy. With daggers equipped, it can be tempting to just hold attack, but this will get you hit. Try tapping attack while holding guard. I use control scheme B so I can keep guard held while on the offense. Tap attack, watch what the enemies do. The only time you should be holding attack is when the enemy drops into a vulnerable state. If you do like I do and use control scheme B, hold down guard while attacking, this will help you avoid most of the attacks as long as you don't overcommit on your attacks, as holding down guard guarantees you get an evade on any non-committed frame. Whenever you have a clear opening on the back of an enemy, I recommend switching to a sword, attacking, and then switching back to your daggers. The reason for this is that you have a high chance of triggering a back attack link for tons and tons of damage while being completely invulnerable. Since daggers can't trigger link strikes, this is something I would often do to do lots of damage while also keeping my party safe. For tech attacks, I would recommend Enhancement on Ignis for the large damage buff that it can give you and Don Hammer on Gladiolus because it just does truckloads of damage. And then on Prompto, I used Piercer. Uh, there might be some better options. I just liked Piercer because it was a really inexpensive attack. Just whenever I needed, you know, something that would just make me invincible and, kind, and do a little bit of damage, Piercer was always there. Let me also quickly mention using the Armager efficiently. One thing that I don't see a lot of people do is actually use their entire armature chain. Many people actually trigger the armature chain early instead of squeaking out every last bit of that meter. As you see here, if you do a warp strike right before the armature chain is about to run out, you actually can keep the armature going once the meter is empty. So when your armature is about to run out, do a warp strike, and right as that warp strike animation is ending, you can hit the armature chain button combination, and you will get every last bit of that meter, and then some. Let me talk about a handful of encounters I would imagine most people would find difficult. Jorgamond and Bilrost, which are the mid-boss and final boss of this dungeon and are pretty much identical fights, Malboros, Elder Corals, and the Five Iron Giants fight. The trick to Jorgamond and Bilrost is pretty much just equip the thermal suit. The thermal suit makes you immune to fire, that's 80% of what those two bosses do. So after that, just go to town and there's not a whole lot else to those two fights. Malboros are pretty much just stay behind them or to the side of them to avoid bad breath, which is not auto-dodgeable. And I would also recommend a sword for this fight, as they do tons of damage to Malboros. 
And one back attack link pretty much does the Malboro in. I wish I had better strats for Elder Corals as they're a pretty difficult to deal with enemy and fairly unpredictable. The one thing I will say is that there are only two fights with Elder Corals in this entire dungeon. Uh, there's one where you just fight one by itself and then another where you fight two of them. So if you just save your Armager for those two fights, that should be able to get you a pretty steep advantage. Other than that, just play really careful. If you see one just sitting off in a corner somewhere, don't attack it. It's going to kill you if you do. And just don't get too aggressive. Stay in guard stance a lot. Counter attack. And that's about it for Elder Corals. Sorry, I don't have more than that against them. They are a pretty difficult enemy type. Lastly is the fight with the five Iron Giants, which is a totally ridiculous fight, one that I would not recommend trying to do straight up. Here you'll see me mixing some Quintacast magic, which I use Mega Elixirs for. The way that the item systems are built in this game, I really didn't find Mega Elixirs too useful as just a straight up item. However, I do find them incredibly potent as a Quintacast ingredient because Quintacast is very, very powerful. With Quintacast in tow, you just kind of play run away, and every time it's up, you use it. I wouldn't worry too much about the lives of your party members, but if they are still around, I would also recommend just setting them all to incredibly cheap techs that you can spam pretty freely. The point of techs here is mostly just to bide time while your Quintacast is on cooldown. Spaced around the room where you fight them, there are barriers where you can take cover. And I would recommend using these from time to time just to keep your MP high. Because you will be using a lot of MP warping around trying to keep your distance from the Iron Giants. Lastly, when the Iron Giant tries to pull you in, don't immediately start warping away. Just try and walk away while holding guard stance only warp once you get near it, otherwise you'll blow all of your MP. Anyway, that's all for tips and tricks on uh, Minus Sleeps in Castlemark. Feel free to ask me any questions, I will also include an upload and a link to a full playthrough of this dungeon where most of this footage was taken from. I hope you liked the video, I hope you found it useful, I hope there was some new information here for you. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and subscribe, and thank you very much.